Hello. Hello, Randy Rain here, and welcome to my new rendition of my robot refurbished show. I have a new partner. It's the Omnibot 2000. Thank you for joining us. On this episode, we tackled that Omi Hoot bought. A robot Randy forgot to do. We will break the Hoot bought down, repair anything broken, then make it sentient. My favorite part is that it really does hoot. You'll see what I mean when we get inside of it. Cute robot, one of my favorites. I agree. Let's do it. This is... Randy Robot Garage. This Tommy who bought does work, but there are some issues that we must address. That's right. And then we're going to make it sentient and give it some senses and have it reactionary. And all without damaging it at all. So, let's get started. Hand me that screwdriver. You got it, boss. So it comes with the stand, and underneath there are four screws here, and there's this black one back here. And you also have to get these two from the feet and take the feet off as well. I think the post for this one here is broken. You can see the post broken for that one. That'll have to be fixed. This tail just comes off with this pin. Hand me my pick. Yeah, if you look here and here, where there are some cracks as well. Let's have a look at it in operation with its body apart here. Yes, the hooting comes from this flap opening right here. And it does it when the wings come up. And the wings are pushed up down inside here. I'll show you that. So let's take the wings off. Yeah, so when you pull those off, everything comes off. So here is the flap that makes the hooting sound. Let's turn it back on. Let's dive deeper and let's see what's inside. The little door. And basically it's an impeller. This is the part that flaps the wings here. Looks like I'll have to get the head apart to get into there any further. So let's take the head apart. That's where the batteries are. It takes two double A's. Let's see what these two screws do. Just as I suspected, that allows us to get the head off. There's this little pin right here. There's two screws, one on either side here. They're different than the other ones are. Came free. So here we have this slot in this piece of plastic that spins around. That little slot has this little pin in it. As that moves around, it causes the pin to be pushed back and forth like that, which in turn makes the head swivel back and forth. On the side here, you can see other indentations. This is essentially the programming. This is classic Tommy, just like the Dingbot and the Spotbot and all of those. All has something similar to this. It looks like this comes off. Inside gears. It runs from this gear right here. I think I need to go ahead and desolder to get it out of the way and make this easier. Okay, it looks like it's probably this stopping me. There we go. It appears that this black piece also programs this thing. And as it comes down here, it pushes this down. And down here, this gear turns this, which flicks the tail. That's what this little ramp here does, is flicks the tail. But then when it gets pushed down, and it disengages the tail, and then it engages this gear on the bottom, connects with the gear on the wheels. So the first gear on the motor is a small gear, but it's also this impeller that's encased inside here. It's forced onto the shaft of the motor. I'd have to physically pop it off of here to get inside. There's also a little small gear down there. And it turns this bigger gear that's actually kind of transparent. It's hard to see. That big gear also has a little small gear connected to it. 
that turns this angle gear. That has a gear connected to it, a smaller gear that turns this bigger gear. That one has a smaller gear that turns this one and which turns this one. And it also turns here the one that activates the tail and the wheels. So it's just gearing down. So on this side is where this little idle wheel gets connected. But it's also what holds this flap for the wings that gets held in place by that as well. Now this pin had fallen out and I didn't know where it came from, but it's what actually transfers the motions here on the side to activate the wings down to the wings and it fits in right here. You can see it pushing on right that flap right there and it's coming up right here and then the, this black piece which is the programming slides right down on top of it. So as it comes around it's going to be pushing down on this thing. Okay so here's what's happening. Have a look here. See this little channel? The blower is in here and it has this. And then right here is a slot with a little wedge. It's a whistle. This creates the air. It blows over this little slot here. If I put electricity to this motor, There's one more thing that that black program piece does and that has to do with that little pin that goes there. As that goes up and down, it's pushing on this little piece of copper here and that's what's activating the lights on for the eyes to come on. So while I'm fixing things, I need to take this off because that's, that's another split gear. Time to fix these broken areas. First thing I do, clean it with some alcohol. Now I'm down to this one that just keeps breaking away. I could just 3D print something. I'm going to show you a different way. First of all, I have a little piece that I can put back. Now what I'm going to do is I have a little piece of rubber tubing here. It's actually a piece of heat shrink. And then I'm going to poke it. Now I'm just going to take the CA glue, hit it with the accelerator, clean the accelerator off. Then I'm going to apply some more. I have little pieces of paper towel. Add some on top. Hit it with the accelerator. Then I'll take my X-Acto knife and clean it up. So it took a little cleaning up. At least the screw sticks in there very well and it's not going anywhere. That's a little quick way of doing it. So now it's time to modify this thing and to do that I need to get inside the head. You can see what's happening with the switch. This is being forced to ground when you push over. What I need to do is get another wire straight from ground and bring it down with these. Alright, so there's that. Time to put this back together. The next modification that I want to make is I want to add this reed switch. This is a magnetic switch. So anytime a magnetic field comes around it, it turns on. And I'm going to glue it right there. Now I can start to assemble. I can go ahead and solder back the wires to the motor. Go ahead and solder some wires to the ends of these. Okay, so I can put the tires in. And this goes on. Put the wings on. So now what I need to do is connect these two wires. 
And then this wire has to hook here. So now you have to add in these little feet. Then you have to add in this tail, this little pin. So now to make this little robot sentient and reactionary. So this is how I'm going to do it. To turn on, it just needs a magnetic field to get close to it. So I'm going to do that magnetic field with this solenoid. So with the solenoid, I have a coil of wire and this shaft. And when electricity is applied to the coil of wire, it's going to make a magnetic field and pull it in. So I'm just going to use the magnetic field to turn on the robot. So here's the sensors I'm going to use. This is the sound. This is a from DF Robot Analog Sound Sensor version 2. Also from DF Robot is this motion detector. The PIR sensor version 1 it looks like. All this is going to be coming to one of these pickaxe chips. This is a 8 pin. So here's the electronic circuit that I ended up with. I have my little sound sensor here. It has to go to its own pickaxe chip because it reads a serial data and the program is paused until it receives this data. So this chip is waiting for a sound to be produced and when it does it lights up a pin which goes over to this one and this one is the actual brain. This one's looking at the pin lighting up from this one. It's looking at the pin lighting up from my motion detector and it's looking at the pin being lit up from the light sensor. And then all that connected goes to this transistor here which ends up right now having it wired up to the solenoid with these little extensions here. 3D printed this little box so that the little solenoid fits in and everything and uh, now I'm going to go paint it black. I have my box painted. Time to put it together. First thing we'll add in this sound. Next is the motion detector. Somehow I can add the solenoid in. Starting to get tight, so this gets plugged into here. That was a lot of work. Yes, it was. And it took a lot of tries to get it right. So don't think I did this the first time. I a lot of mistakes, a lot of that was edited out. But hey, I finally got it working. So let's check it out. It's the Hootbot. Comes free from the stand. This sits on there. So now the Hootbot rests on top. And now all we have to do is plug it in. So now it just resets and now it's at its beginning. So now if there's any motion in front of it, it's going to turn on. It's going to turn on and do things according to the lights and also sound. So if I
Well, there it is, the Tommy Hoot Bot, all refurbished and brought to life. Pretty snazzy, huh? Took you long enough. Yeah, what do you know? I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. If you want to see more stuff like this, please subscribe. I'm Randy Rain, and this is the Omnibot 2000. Thanks for watching. That was... Hey, that's my line. That was... Randy Robot Garage. Since I did all the work, you got to clean up. Here, there's a few dust bots to help.